Hello, everyone, and welcome back for the fourth episode of the Orange Bowl Huddle presented by Sunshine Health. I'm your host and honored to be here with you today, Tony Segreto. You know, the last time we were together, the two football coaches from the University of Michigan and the University of Georgia, Jim Harbaugh and Kirby Smart, joined us to preview the playoff semifinal at the Capital One Orange Bowl. Just a few months later, the 2021 season is all in the rearview mirror. Can you believe it? Like time has flown by. And as you saw in December, the Georgia Bulldogs defeated the Wolverines in the playoff semifinal at the Capital Orange Bowl. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to be joined by another special guest to reflect on bowl week and the end of the 2021 college football season. And then afterwards, we're going to take a look at everything Orange Bowl and everything that Orange Bowl is doing right here in our backyard to benefit the community. You know, one of the things Orange Bowl does best is work in our community. And many people are not aware of it, or you're gonna be aware of it after today. Some of the things that we're gonna hit on are a look back at the Orange Bowl Florida High School Football Showcase presented by Baptist Health. A recap of the Orange Bowl Florida High School Basketball Showcase presented by American Airlines. And the annual Orange Bowl Swim Classic. But before we get into all of that, let's welcome in our special guest for today, Georgia football linebacker, Keely Ringo. Keely Ringo, can you believe it was, uh, gosh, it, it, it seems like it was yesterday, but we're already talking four months ago that you, uh, you were at the Orange Bowl and then you win the national championship. A lot of time has passed, but I have to believe you're still kind of on that high. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So tell me about your experience at the Orange Bowl specifically. You know, your week-long period here, uh, you leave Athens, Georgia, you find yourself in the big city on the beach, uh, you know, some free time, but you're preparing for a big game, your semifinal game. What was that experience like for you to, to be here at Orange Bowl? Um, going to the Orange Bowl was a great experience, actually being to Miami, actually for my first time. Um, I enjoyed it actually being with my teammates and, and, and actually a lot of my friends. So just being being able to enjoy that time with them and, and also building a lot more connections and stuff like that, um, just like for an entire week when you're with them, like, um, from the time you guys go to sleep, from the time that you wake up to practice to meetings, I mean, like it's pretty hard not to build a relationship with those that, um, that you're with throughout the entire day, and yeah. um, just like from practice to meetings, I mean, like it was it was really different with being in Miami. It was it was really easy to get distracted and so like that because we are in Miami. But like I feel like we we handled that pretty well, and um, I, I feel like it was a great experience for me just being able to come out with the win for my team. And um, also being able to enjoy our time too, and um, being able to come out with a win. Yeah, yeah, you handled the distractions well. But let's talk about that for a minute. So your first time in Miami, what was your impression of Miami? Um, it was it was real different. It, it, it was like a much bigger city rather than um, I have been ever in. Like compared to Atlanta, I would say um, Miami is like a little bit bigger of a city. Um, I feel like. A lot of different personalities, a lot of different um, type of people out there. I mean, like um, going on the boat when we're walking the boardwalk, um, like just seeing all different type of people that there was fans, people from Miami, people from um, just visiting Miami. You were able to tell definitely who, who was from Miami and who wasn't. That's why we were, um, when, when we were with the team, we were just walking around the boardwalk on our own. We, we definitely had to walk in packs because it was definitely easy to figure out who was, who was from Miami and who wasn't for sure. What was your what was your favorite activity that that you were able to do that Orange Bowl provided for you? My favorite activities. One of my favorite activities was going on the yacht because I don't think I've been on the yacht before and eating, <laughs> eating a luxurious meal uh, with my teammates. You know, uh, we're on live with our phones on Instagram, just enjoying our time, having a lot of laughs, listening to music. That was a good time. Just just team bonding things. You know, yeah. was the food good? Great, great. <laughs> Well, now tell me, tell me what the, what was the menu? I have I haven't been on that yacht yet. I mean, I've been on yachts, but I haven't been on that one yet. What was the menu? What was I your? I remember like it was a good amount of things, like all types of shrimp, to um, like pasta, steaks, um, a whole bunch of fruit, like fried things, grilled. I mean, like the there was a lot of different options for sure, but um, it was pretty hard to remember. Okay, so listen, this is between you and me because I've been in those buffets before, right? Right. And, and there's always that urge to say to take some of those jumbo shrimp and kind of stuff them in your pocket. <laughs> Why is that? I, well, because, you know, it's one of those things where you want to eat it now, but then you're thinking maybe in two hours I'm going to be hungry again. And these shrimp are really good. <laughs> I can't stash no food in my pocket. You ever get lit? 
<laughs> you stuff with your pockets. Oh gosh. Well, I didn't know. I just wanted to know. I wouldn't tell anybody if you did. I promise. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> now, now we didn't lose anybody overboard, did we? Or did we no, come sir. close no, to sir. losing anyone not, overboard? Not at all. Not at all. Nobody was wrestling around the rails or anything like that at all. No, sir. Were, yeah. were you given? You talked about the distractions. What were what were some of your distractions that that you um, had to like take? You know, really like go. Okay, we can't be doing this. Or we can't be distracted by this. Sir. Um, just walking up the boardwalk that there was a lot of um, just people out and around um, like from like parties and stuff like that and, and like bars and um, just just things that you definitely want to be able to separate yourself from, especially when you're on a business trip at the same time, you know, so definitely not want to do anything that that could jeopardize you being able to play in the game or or, um, or hurt your team in general. So yeah, just, do, just being smart in those environments. Yeah. All right. Now, again, between us, you didn't sneak out after curfew, did you? <laughs> there was no chance of being able to do that no sir <laughs> that. were they guarding all the doors and everything on you and um actually he gave a speech at the beginning of the um as soon as we got there of people that tried to leave um i forgot what year it was but um he said um i forgot what year it was but um the information doesn't matter too too much but if you're leave if you leave after bed check then you're you're gonna end up leaving for sure yeah so. you're you're done you're done yes, listen yes. you know i have been to athens and it's an amazing atmosphere when you get that full stadium going. I mean, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing feeling, but understanding the, the, the implications of the game you were in against Michigan, when you walked out onto that orange bowl field, realizing that NFL teams play there, Super Bowl games have been played there. You see the cameras going off, flash going off TV cameras everywhere, fans screaming, you know, the lights are bright. What was that feeling? Can you tell us what that was like standing in the tunnel for you? I mean, if you had measured your heartbeat and your heart rate, what, what do you think, what do you think it was at that moment? Um, man, like, I feel like I felt more comfortable as the season definitely went on. I feel like my first game coming to the season, going to North Carolina against Clemson, it, it was, it was a half and half stadium, you know, so it was a definitely huge environment. Um, a big alarming one, be also being in um, North Carolina as well at the Panther Stadium. So I feel like that was my like my first and biggest wake up call. I feel like you know, um, so like after after that game, um, having home games so like that, and, and just being on my team in general, just learning the environment, um, just like playing more comfortable within my game, honestly. So then when we got towards towards the playoffs, I feel like I was able to play more comfortable because I feel like the SEC game as as well. I also had those um, like the not necessarily nervous, but like, I'm ready to play, I'm ready to play, you know? So then um, like everybody, made me, um, there was a good amount of um, technical difficulties that we definitely had throughout that game. So then um, as we got to the playoffs, we were able to change those and, and, and also in the national championship and we were able to make things happen, so. Yeah, did, did you realize how much that national championship would mean to Coach Smart? Um, I definitely did think so, um, definitely this school actually being his alma mater and actually um, Coach Moore having the opportunity to win the national championship after all the things that are said about the University of Georgia. That's actually one of the part of the reasons why I came to the University of Georgia because I actually trust, I trust Coach Moore and um, I definitely believe the work that he's put in and in, um, in, in, in like this, the schemes and the things that he wants to do with the University of Georgia. So um, I feel like him him being able to achieve that is definitely something that, um, that mattered to him for sure. All right, so it's, it's time to be honest again, just you and me talking again, okay? So when you're a little, when you're a little kid, and let's say you're, you, you're, you want to be a baseball player, there's that, you know, you're making up in your mind, you're, you're in the backyard playing with your friends, you're on the schoolyard playing with your friends, and you're going, you know, bottom of the ninth, three and two count, pitch to, to, to Keeley Ringo, and he hits it over the fence for a home run. And if you want to be a football player, there's that feeling of, toward the end of the game, you want to be able, if you're on defense, to pick one off and run it back for a touchdown. Yes, you did that. Yes, sir. When you're running it back, are you thinking of what you're going to do when you cross the, the goal line into the end zone? Are you thinking about looking at your mom, where your dad is, where your, where your siblings are? Are you thinking of any of that? What are you thinking? Or are you thinking, I better not get caught from behind? Um, honestly, like, I, I couldn't even tell you exactly what I was thinking. I, I like, after um, after I turn around and find the ball, I'm, I'm just thinking like I got I got to catch the ball, like because um, the lights were so. Don't bright. drop it, right? Don't drop it. Yes, sir. No, 
not even saying drop it. Like I gotta catch it. I'm always thinking positive throughout the game because like I feel like when you're um when you start to think like hopefully not to do something, that's when things like negative things start to happen to you. So I always think positive of, of, of like making this play or make sure I do this, make sure I'm, make sure I'm checking this check or or like leverage and things like that. But just making sure I secure the ball because Chris Smith earlier in the game when he had the interception, he said it was real bright and, it, and the ball got caught in the lights and I felt the same exact thing. So just just me being able to locate the ball and then just and just focus on catching it. And after I turn around, I, I, I see all my teammates look at me and he's like, you got the ball. They turn around, we start running. I'm like, I'm behind you guys. Let's go. You know, <laughs> yeah. we fall out from each other. So at the end of the day, we're, we're able to take it back in. But but there's got to be that feeling because the one thing a linebacker or a lineman who makes an interception, the one thing they always tell me is that my biggest fear was being caught from behind and, and taking a whole lot of grief from my teammates because I couldn't make it into the end zone. So you had to be running probably faster than you ever have in your life. The crazy thing is, like, after I actually ran, you know, after I was finished, you know, when I caught the ball, I knew the, the receiver was going to be close to me. So I took I, I took a few burst steps, like, to accelerate at first. And then I was kind of, like, just weaving my way through, like, after watching the tape, I definitely could have ran much faster than what I was running. But uh, <laughs> because Coach Martin was kind of worried. He told me that he thought he was going to catch me from behind as well. But, um, like, just just the path that I took definitely helped me be able to um, – and my teammates blocker for me the way that they did definitely helped me be able to make the end zone. Well, you, you come to Miami. You win the semifinal. You go to Indianapolis. You win the national championship. So – are we going to see you back here in Miami? Maybe just kind of visiting. Would you like to come back just to vacation and not and not be on a business trip? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Possibly, most definitely. If I had the opportunity, if the opportunity was um, given to me. Well, listen. We we loved having you at the Orange Bowl. We thought, you know, first of all, I, I thought you and your teammates represented your school, Athens, uh, the entire state of Georgia, with the utmost class and integrity. And I know Coach Smart, it meant a lot for Coach Smart. He talked a lot about the culture that was on this specific team and how well you all got along. And that had to play a major role in how well you guys performed. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Now, now I got to ask you one more thing before I let you go. Are you sitting in Coach Smart's office? No, sir. It's not his office. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. I don't think I've seen anybody actually sit in this chair. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well we may have to work on that just for you okay <laughs> all right well listen keely ringo it has been an honor and a pleasure to speak with you congratulations again on the national championship on how to end a game with, with your pick six and we look forward to uh, to hopefully seeing you down here on vacation you let us know if you're coming and if not hopefully we'll see you down here again with the university of georgia thanks for joining us thank you so much i appreciate you Stay with us. We're going to take a quick break so we can get a word in from our great sponsor. This is James. Jimmy! This is James. Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh! The 2021 Toyota RAV4. Jimmy! The RAV for all of you. A special thank you to Keeley. What a fine, handsome young man. Now, obviously, as you could tell, he and his teammates had a great time here at Orange Bowl. And why not? I mean, it's the best bowl you can go to, right? Now, obviously, everyone knows about the Capital One Orange Bowl football game. However, the work that Orange Bowl does in the community is amazing. Now, obviously, everyone knows about the Capital One Orange Bowl football game. However, the work that the Orange Bowl committee does right here in our backyard year round is so important and makes such an impact in the South Florida community. Now, one of those initiatives just took place in the Orange Bowl Florida High School Football Showcase, which is presented by Baptist Health. On Saturday, February 12th, more than 200 high school seniors showcased their athletic talents in front of over 40 colleges from across the country. Since 2017, this showcase has made it possible for more than 300, that's right, 300 student athletes to receive over $6 million in financial assistance to go to college. More and more opportunities each year, and it's not slowing down. And what this does, it gives these high school athletes an opportunity to perform in front of colleges who otherwise would not even know they exist. That's how important it is. And it's so important for us at Orange Bowl. And at the annual high school football showcase, 
High school seniors got to exhibit their skills through drills, tests, and competitions right in front of Division II, Division III, even NIA and junior colleges from all over the country. And once again, it's a great way for the Orange Bowl to provide these student athletes with a way to create another stage in their football careers. A huge thank you to everyone involved in making the event happen each and every year, especially our presenting sponsor. We couldn't do it without Baptist Health. And of course, St. Thomas University for hosting us. We're so thankful for your support. And so are the student athletes who have been impacted by this tremendous event. Now we have another event to focus on. This is the Orange Bowl Florida High School Basketball Showcase. This is presented by American Airlines, which just wrapped up on March 19th. Similar to the Orange Bowls football showcase, the basketball showcase provides, again, student athletes an opportunity to show off their skills with college coaches from all over the country. But you know, one of the real great things about this event, because of the nature of the sport, it's open to junior and senior boys and girls. The event is just in its second year. To add more about this event, let's bring in Christine Valls. She's the American Airlines Vice President of Sales. Christine? For us, we believe that student athletes have an opportunity to develop themselves after high school. I was a basketball player when I, when I was growing up. I played in college as well, so I understand firsthand the impact of, be, of being a student athlete. So we're hoping that with this showcase, we are giving the opportunity for athletes to be able to connect with colleges um, throughout the country. So American Airlines and the Orange Bowl have been partners for over 20 years. We have done many activities together, just like this basketball showcase, and it has a, such a strong impact in the community. And we are so much more than just flying people from point A to point B, just like the Orange Bowl is so much more than the football game. Thank you, Christine, and a major thank you to American Airlines for your support of Orange Bowl. We couldn't pull off the event without you. And of course, being the Orange Bowl means that it's year-round events and that they never stop on land or even on water. The annual Orange Bowl Swim Classic was held at the Jacobs Aquatic Center down in Key Largo back in early January. You know, since June 2002, the Jacobs Aquatic Center has served South Florida as a first-class facility with a world-class pool and state-of-the-art timing system, providing annual competitors from all over with the finest competition stage in the internationally acclaimed Orange Bowl Swim Classic. It was a busy day of competition as Northern Michigan took home the top spot in both the men's and women's races. Valparaiso University took second place with Colby Sawyer College and the College of the Florida Keys also taking the water. The Orange Bowl Swim Classic is a fantastic event. It's in beautiful Key Largo. And why wouldn't it be a fantastic event down there? And we thank all of our sponsors, our supporters. And to say the least, it truly makes a splash. <laughs> Well, folks, that's going to do it for this episode of the Orange Bowl Huddle presented by Sunshine Health. I hope you enjoy watching it as much as we enjoy doing it, because we really do have a blast. A big thank you to Georgia linebacker Keely Ringo and Christine Valls for joining us. And thank you all for tuning in. Orange Bowl cares. It's your support, ladies and gentlemen, that enable us to do what we do every single day, all year round in this community. For all of us at Orange Bowl. I'm Tony Segreto. We hope to see you next time. This is James. Jimmy! This is James. Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh! The 2021 Toyota RAV4. Jimmy! The RAV for all of you. Small towns across America have been left behind in wireless coverage. We have a lot of issues with our cell service, calls dropping, and areas where we don't have internet. Where I work is pretty rural, and I don't really get any phone service. You get what you get. T-Mobile believes no town should be left behind. That's why we've been investing billions to bring our award-winning network to hometowns just like yours. T-Mobile covers 99% of people in America. Make the switch today.